Hey guys, this is Warren here. Welcome to my home studio. And uh, today we're going to look at one of the most frequent questions I get asked. How I record these amps silently without getting the cops called, without troubling my neighbors and uh, disturbing my family. So this is the way I do it. I've been doing this for like a couple of years now and it's worked really well to the point where I haven't really miked a cab in a very long time. So I'm going to go through the whole signal chain and uh, let you know how I record these things. So here's the amp rack and uh, we've got the Soldano SLO 100 on the top. That's what I've plugged into at the moment. Uh, this is a Marshall Plexi clone made by Rocket Retro. This is a Vox AC30 CCH and uh, that's a Sir Bella. So it's kind of like, you know, high gain Marshall Vox and uh, fender -y kind of a, a situation going on here. The amps are switched by that little box over there and uh, they go through the two Sir reactive loads. And uh, I just plug into the amp that I want to play into and I select which amp goes to the loads. There's two of them so I can actually run two amps at the same time. And it's pretty easy to switch between whichever amp you want, you know, you just pick one of the four and uh, away we go. So this is a studio rack and the speaker leads from the amps via the switch box. They come into these two Sir reactive loads and those uh, go into the universal Apollo that you can see, the blue and the green wires over there. So those are the inputs in, uh, into the computer. And uh, there's a bit of processing as well, which we'll come to later. So those are the three racks. That's the Eventide H3000, Lexicon PCM70, and the Lexicon PCM80. And they go into the Apollo via that Mackie 8 channel uh, mic preamp. So it's kind of just acting as, a, uh, as an interface to add another 8 channels to the system via ADAT. And uh, let's go over to the computer now and we'll see how things work over there. Okay, so now we're in computer land and the two Sir reactive loads, they come in on the first two channels you can see here. And uh, they're two separate signals so I can actually record two amps at the same time. Now each of them has got a bit of processing on it. Now because the loads themselves don't host IRs, they just come in as a pure unfiltered signal, we need to apply the speaker emulation. And for that, uh, the first thing I've got here is this uh, Friedman DS40. It's a dirty Shirley amp sim. But I've bypassed the amp sections. You can see the preamp and power amp toggle switches are on bypass. So that takes the amp part out of the, the plugin and you're just using the speaker emulations. And they've got a whole bunch of IRs that uh, come with each of the plugins. So I just kind of selected one that works and uh, you bypass the noise gate, bypass the delay and everything else. And you're just using it purely for speaker emulation. So they've got quite a few of these plugins. There's also uh, some from Sir and uh, a couple of other uh, amp manufacturers. So you can do the same thing with them. You just bypass the amp part and just use them as uh, speaker emulation. The next thing I've got in line is uh, this LA3A compressor. I'm hardly using it for compression, but uh, maybe just a couple of dB at the most, you know, if you're palm muting and stuff like that. But it does act as a really nice tonal enhancer. It just brings out, you know, the high mids in a very nice way without making it sound harsh. Uh, the next thing in line is this API 550A EQ. Again, another UAD plugin. And I'm bumping 203 kilohertz, 200 hertz, 3 kilohertz. And uh, that's basically just a low mid and a high mid bump, you know, if, uh, if needed. Um, from there, this console thing is really nifty. So it lets me actually use my hardware as QSense like you would in an analog environment. So uh, Q1 goes to the PCM80, which is usually on a delay setting. Q2 goes to the PCM70, which is usually on a reverb setting. And Q3 goes to the Eventide H3000, which is usually like, you know, micro shift or shimmer or any of the cool H3000 stuff. And these uh, returns, they come back 100% wet, which is without any dry signal on these three faders. So here's your H3000, here's your PCM80, and here's your PCM70, and you can mix them, you know, as needed. Uh, you can just reduce the, the faders if you need less or boost them up if you need more. Now these three get submixed to this AUX1, which then goes to Cubase. 
So uh, in QAs, I normally record three signals. It's either one of the two reactive loads or both if I am recording two amps simultaneously. I'm also recording AUX1, which is a submix of the two lexicons and the even tide. And AUX2 has got this ocean way, which I'm using as like a room reverb. It just gives the sound a bit of depth. And um, you can see it's got two my two modes rather, remic and reverb. So remic is kind of when you put it on the entire signal and that kind of makes the signal sound like it was recorded in that studio. And reverb is just adding some of the room reflections to the sound. So you can actually get a whole bunch of different mics which changes the character of the room. You can EQ it. It's a really cool plugin and uh, definitely something I, I use it on every single mix. So we're recording the Sir reactive load that signal by itself, then we're recording AUX1, which is all the three effects, and we're recording AUX2, which is the ocean way. Now, one cool thing about console is you can choose to commit these two plugins. Uh, so when it's on red, you, you're basically tracking uh, the processed signal. But if I had it on blue, I would be tracking only uh, the, the unfiltered out of the Sir reactive loads, and that lets me use other IRs as needed which we can come to later in the video. So that's uh, basically expanding, uh, you know, your amp sound and you can just use multiple mics and multiple cabs if, if needed. Most of the time I choose to track this because I like the way it's sounding, you know, there's no need to really change much. But if I do need the flexibility, then I'll just switch this to blue and we'll track the unfiltered out from the Sir reactive loads. Let's go over to Cubase now and see how things work there. So here we've got Cubase open and to record my guitar I would open three tracks and we've got the Sir reactive load, the effects which is the three rack effects together and Ocean Way reverb on its own track. So let's hit record and and let's see what we get on each track. Now the Sir reactive load by itself This is the effects. So this is the PCM70 on its tiled room preset and this is the ocean way by itself. Now if you put them all together You get a nice sound which is pretty full. You have the clarity from the Sir reactive load direct signal and you've got the effects to add some you know, depth and ambience and you've got the ocean way for that room depth. Now, uh, if I need more of the ocean way, I'll push that up. If I need less of the dry, I'll pull that down. And maybe if I don't need the reverb at all, I simply have to mute that. So I have a lot of control. In fact, with that Sir reactive load uh, direct signal, I can generate another bunch of effects if I don't uh, like what I've already got here. Most of the time I just end up keeping what I've got and I try to get the sound uh, while I'm tracking rather than to try and do it later in the mix. So the mix stage is basically just for minor volume differences between these three signals rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and come up with a totally new different sound. Now in the event that I want a little bit more flexibility, all I have to do is just simply click this button here. Now all these plugins, the Friedman, the LA3A and the API 550A won't get recorded and they will just be on for monitoring purposes only. So now let's go to Cubase and uh, hit record. <laughs> And if we solo the Sir reactive load signal here, you will get this horrible scratchy sounding thing. <laughs> so we can add something like the two notes wall of sound to add the cab emulation. So now it sounds like this. Okay, so if you solo it, you have another um, set of mics and cabs that you can add here. So I would then need to add the LA3A and the uh, API 550A. You can do it without. So this is adding a bit of level as well, but that's kind of what I like. 
So you can see minimal compression happening here. Now let's add the other signals back. And you have a fully processed guitar sound. And with a program like Wall of Sound, you can add a whole bunch of different cabinets. Here I'm using the, the new Friedman uh, set that they recorded at Sunset Sound. So there's one cab with uh, G1265 and there's the other cab with uh, Celestian Vintage 30s and the usual 57 and M160 that I would normally run in a studio situation. Now let's check out some of the sounds that we're going to get from this rig. I'll put descriptions for whatever I'm using. <laughs>
this video i hope it was informative and in case you have any other questions let me know in the comments i'll do my best to answer them please like and subscribe and thank you for watching